last summer, Mitchell Meeks. spent the summer at his grandma's island called cottage. Early one moment, morning, Th Thomas's grandmother gave him a, a magnifying glass. This belonged to your grandfather, she said. Thomas, Thomas liked the way the magnifying glass made everything, every grain of sand look as big as a ball. He liked the dark clam shells on became twirling, swirling mazes of black, gray, and white under the glasses. Thomas's grandmother picked up something from the rocky shore. What did you find? Thomas asked. She opened her hand a piece of sea glass. It doesn't look like glass. Grandmother placed it in Thomas's hand. Years ago, something made of glass was struck in the ocean, in the sea, and after being broken and tossed in salt water, the sand in pieces, the pieces turned smooth and cloudy. Thomas ran his fingers along the rounded edges and held the green glass to the morning sun. Where do you think it came from? I'm not sure, grandmother said, but your grandfather used to say that each piece of glass has a story all its own. That night, Thomas, with the sea glass on the table beside his bed, Thomas dreamed of a shipyard long ago. Ken Kenlin wiggled through the crowd, hoping for a better view. He, he and Papa waited at the shipyard for the ceremony to begin. Over the heads of the people, a huge navy destroyed a powerful mass of iron spear, ready for battle, and held together with sweat and hard working of men craftsmen, rose from the dark. Did you really go to Papa? Papa laughed. Not by myself, son. Are you proud? Proud as a man can be. On the platform, Men and ladies, dressed as if it were Sunday morning, gathered at the bow of the enormous ship. What's happening? Kellen whispered when an elegant woman stepped forward. Shh, Mrs. Knox was about to speak. Papa entered and then placed a finger to his lips. Helen stood on his tippy toes, just in time to see Mrs. Knox swing a bottle of a bottle of champagne. Champagne, ice, Tristan, the ship, the USS Frank Knox. She shouted over the cheers for the crowd and the green glass bottle shattered into a hundred pieces and fell into the water. Each morning that summer, Thomas and his grandmother hurried down the beach to see what the tide had left behind. Once Thomas found a real, like, a real treasure, a large chunk of sea glass with a few letters, song, just barely raised on its surface. Thomas wondered what the letters might have been a part of what history the glass might tell. When Thomas slipped between the cold sheets that night, he dreamed of wind and waves and a terrible storm. The captain shouted orders could barely hear could barely be heard over the roar of the winds as men scurried to their stations. Lower the sails! 
but the white sailor bag runs from the little man cat. The mast creaked and groaned against an angry wind. The schooner listened to starboard, and sailor slid across its bloody deck. The stone blades and the brave men fought until they heard the captain's desperate cry, Abandon ship! The captain stayed with his vessel until every last sailor was saved, and then he too rode onto a lifeboat and headed for shore. Below the decks of the mighty ship, pots and pans crashed in the racially floor. Shells of canned wax beans and peaches were popped in, and one massive jar after another shattered. Then a fierce wave came over and blew off the shutter. It took the ship with all its currents to the bottom of the sea. Throughout that summer, Thomas's favorite days were sea glass days, and his favorite nights were sea glass nights. As the, as the summer days grew slower and shorter, Thomas's grandma prepared the cottage for autumn, and Thomas continued to comb the shores for more sea stories. One morning, Grandma said, we'll leave in the mainland early tomorrow. As an osprey soared over them, they de decided the stair staircase to the beach one last time. Thomas hoped to find one more piece of glass. He hoped to leave one last last exciting journey. He searched and searched, but all Thomas found that day were rocks and broken cane shells. As he lay in bed last night, Thomas could smell the salt of the ocean. He could hear the whisper of the wind. He looked at his grandfather's mind glass beside the table. Perhaps he dreamed of his grandfather. Finally, his eyelids became heavy. That night, Thomas dreamed of nothing. gathered his favorite summer treasures, a smooth beach rock, two cane shells, grandpa's magnifying glass, and his precious sea glass, and boarded a ferry. They were, when the ferry launched forward, he lost his balance in grandfather's mag magnifying magnify glass slipped from his finger into the big boat, big boat's wind deck. With a heavy heart, Thomas began to pick up what was left of the shadow magnifying glass. When Grandma, Grandma helped his, his, him wrap the pieces in hand chest, chest, hand chest, he stood and watched as the island disappeared from view, Thomas the last summer was over. Not so many years ago, a little girl named Annie arrived at her family's cottage by the sea. Annie was a collector of all sorts of treasures. At home, she collected acorn and pine and acorn cobs and pine cones and metal flowers. At the seashore, she found different things to collect. She delighted in clamshells and smoother rocks. One day, Annie was exploring the shallow tadpoles near the cottage, found an, an unusual piece of sea glass. to her grandfather, grandfather's beach chair and placed her new treasure 
in his hands. Look what I found. Thomas, Papa Tom, lifted the piece of sea glass to the sun. Its edges were smooth and warm, and the once clear glass was now cloudy white. But in pa Papa's Tom, Papa Thomas' hands, it felt strangely familiar. You know, they say each piece of glass, each piece of glass has a story of its own, he said. Just imagine what tale the glass could tell. That, that night, with the treasures by her side, Annie slept soundly and dreamed of a boy named Thomas. Remember, this is Sea Glass Sandwich.